one of my favorite stories of all time was my friend Deborah Gare. She was driving from um, driving into London before the sun rose one morning. And she didn't see the lorry that was across both lanes of the highway because it didn't have any lights on. And by the time she hit the brake, it was too late because her car was already smashing into the truck. And four or five other cars plowed into the back of her car. Some angelic man somehow got her out of the car before it exploded. It had caught flames. Uh, six, seven years later, she was barely able to walk. She was getting painful injections into her neck and back uh, that weren't helping her. She had lost her job as a scientist. She, her boyfriend had left her and her doctor says, soon you'll be living in a wheelchair. So she, out of desperation, because she never would have done this otherwise, she went into a bookstore that was selling metaphysical books and they found out that they had my Quantum Touch video workshop, which we still sell, by the way, many years later. Um, and they watched it for the very first time in the bookstore as a group. Now, this isn't even a live teacher. This is just watching a video. And they watched the video. And the very first practice session that Deborah received took 90% of her pain away and she could turn her head. Mm. And she went back to the doctor and told the doctor what had happened. And he said, well, you'll be, you'll be back here soon enough begging for injections. And she said, no, I'm probably never going to see you again. And, and then she came back one more time with the flyer and said, would you like to learn about this? He goes, get out of here. Hello and welcome to Activating Greatness. I'm Nathan Crane, an award-winning author, documentary filmmaker, and health and wellness expert. And I'm Derek Crane, a certified personal trainer, health and fitness coach, and trainer of professional athletes. Each week, we broadcast new episodes with experts on life, health, fitness, business, and leadership to help you manifest the greatness that's already within you. Activating Greatness is about helping you live your life to your fullest potential and live with more meaning, purpose, health, and fulfillment. In this episode, we're talking with Richard Gordon, the founder of Quantum Touch. Richard Gordon is recognized as one of the pioneers in the field of energy healing. He's been developing and teaching healing techniques since the mid-1970s. Today, as the founder of Quantum Touch, Richard's an internationally acclaimed speaker at conferences, medical centers, chiropractic colleges, and holistic health institutes. He's been on the faculty at Hartwood Institute and the Holistic Health Institute. Richard's also the author of The Secret Nature of Matter, as well as the books Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal, and Quantum Touch 2.0, The New Human. And before we dive in uh, to today's episode, we want to send a thank you to our sponsors for helping make this podcast possible for you. Performance tea is something both Derek and I drink and love. One thing we really like about it is that it's handcrafted in small batches and made of the best medicinal herbs. We're both huge believers and consumers of herbs and love the healing benefits that herbal medicine brings to the body. Go to performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. They have incredible teas for energy, focus, recovery, and balance. Again, that's performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount today. So if you're ready to activate the greatness that's within you, let's dive into this powerful episode. Richard, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we have a lot of ground to cover in this episode, um, oh, yeah. and <laughs> we're gonna do our best uh, to cover as much as we can. I know the work you've been doing over the years has been remarkable. The healing stories, the transformation in people's lives. Um, I think this is gonna be a truly profound um, opening for a lot of people who are maybe new to quantum touch or new to, to energy in general in terms of healing yeah. and, and activation. But um, let's start with a little uh, foundation, laying a foundation of what is quantum touch? Quantum touch is a very direct system where ordinary people learn very quickly 
how to move awareness through their body and move their breath through their body. And in doing so, they raise their own energy field. They create a field of energy between their hands. And then by applying and sandwiching the other person's pain or whatever's going on, or even your own burn or your knee or whatever, between your hands, there's a matching of energy. The other person or, your, or yourself matches this higher vibration. And then through a process we call resonance and entrainment, the, the vibrations match each other. And then the body uses that energy for its own self-healing. So ultimately, quantum touch is a way of accelerating the self-healing process. So it looks like you're doing it to them, and in a sense you are, but in a deeper level, you're allowing them to do their own self-healing. We like to say that all healing is self-healing, and what we're doing is stimulating and accelerating that process. So how did you discover this? Well, back in the early 70s, my health was getting bad, so I went to a doctor. And he gave me the inspiring words that led me to a whole different future. He said, well, nothing's bad enough to treat you. Let's wait till you get worse. So I thought, okay, <laughs> screw that. <laughs> so I went to a holistic health school and I learned something called polarity therapy, which was amazing, blew me away. And I wrote my first book called Your Healing Hands, The Polarity Experience that's, you know, was translated into 11 languages and did very well. But a few months before that book came out, in uh, 1978, I met a gentleman named Robert Rasmussen, this blasé, obese grandpa who uh, told tall tales, and I couldn't believe a word he said. I thought, this guy's just making up shit, you know? It's like he's saying, oh, yeah, the child broke his leg, and the next day he's walking comfortably, and the bone was sticking out of the flesh, and you could see it. He says, oh, yeah, the tumor was the size of a grapefruit, and it melted in an hour. And he says, oh, I just touch people, and the bones move into alignment. And I'm thinking, this guy's so full of it. <laughs> and then my girlfriend gets up to the front of the room, and we're all looking at her scoliosis. And she has a major scoliosis. It's a big S-curve in her spine. And he touches her hips and they roll just like nothing, right back into alignment. And he touches the cranial bones and they just go back in. I, I, I'm dumbfounded, my jaw's on the floor. And I assume he has a rare gift and no one's gonna learn it and certainly not me. But in the course of the day, I could actually move cranial bones with a light touch. Now, look at Gray's Anatomy or any of the textbooks and they'll tell you by the time you're an adult, the cranial bones have all fused together into a helmet-like plate, and they can't be moved. Eh, maybe so, except that they do. And I've done this thousands of times. Anyway, I apprenticed with Bob, took over in his retirement. I evolved his work so radically, the people still doing what he taught back in the mid-late 70s um, don't even recognize what I've brought forward because I've taken out the woo-woo, made it really straightforward. Everybody learns to do this immediately. So it's kind of funny. Energy healing is one of the most inspiring things that you could possibly do. And it can also be incredibly boring. Because I don't want to exaggerate up or down on this at all. This is just what it is. For five or six or 12 days a year, it's the most important skill that you can have. Because when a loved one, somebody you care about is in pain, and there's something that you can do now, that's like the best thing in the world. And just because you know how to ride a bicycle doesn't mean that you're gonna ride a bicycle every day, or you're gonna make your career riding a bicycle, but you wanna know how to ride a bicycle or swim or whatever we're comparing it to. And this is a basic human skill that I really believe should be taught in every elementary school, middle school, high school. It should be researched at every single university. It should be utilized in every hospital in the world. So we, we have our work out cut out for us. We got a little bit of work to do yet before the, that vision will come to manifest. So saying that it's a basic skill and you're saying anyone can learn to do this and they oh, yeah. learn to do it quickly. Oh, yeah. Let's say somebody who has no experience 
you know, yeah. working with energy, connecting with energy, just like you, maybe we're skeptic and yeah. they start this training. How quickly are people seeing the ability to heal conditions like this? All right, let's, let's look at the basics. The basic thing is most people care about pain and inflammation and accelerating healing. Very few people care about moving bones, but I like that because it's something visible that I can show in a few seconds. It's a visual demonstration. Okay, it was here, now it's there, and there's no denying it. Everybody will be able to move bones back into alignment before lunch break on the first day of a workshop before lunch break. Mm. And when I was teaching, I said, it's a money back guarantee. No one ever failed. And I taught thousands of people wow. when I was on the road doing that kind of stuff. This is truly the easiest skill that a person can learn. Listen, if I suggest to you, can you take a deep breath and then let it go? Was that a challenge? Did it take any training to be able to do that? It was automatic. If I say, hold up a finger, and this is an exercise that I'm gonna give everybody in the audience to do, don't do it while you're driving if you're listening to this, but if you hold up a finger and you look at your finger and you see how much sensation you're capable of feeling in your finger without touching it, you might pay attention to see, can you feel the blood pulsing through your finger? Can you feel the tendons that allow you to move your finger? Can you feel the fingernail as it attaches to the finger? Now take a breath and breathe through the finger. See how much you can, as, as if you were actually breathing through the finger. And now imagine you have a feather and you're stroking your finger with the feather. Can you actually feel where you, you're using your imagination to actually stroke your finger with a feather? Can you feel it in those places? Or perhaps you can feel underneath the fingernail and what's under there. Now, let me ask you a question. Is your finger buzzing, tingling, vibrating, pulsing, or something like that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, how much skill did that take? Does that, was that challenging? Not in the least. But what we do in the first day of the workshop, for the first exercises, is we show you a method where you're going to get your whole body feeling that way. We're gonna, and then we're going to move it in waves with breathing techniques where you're linking the breathing patterns with the body, and we're moving it into our hands. And then on the very first practice session, we're getting results. So unlike something like Reiki, which everybody knows about, uh, we've got no attunements. We have no magic symbols. We have no set hand positions. And we're not waiting for the energy we're bringing it. Now, as good as you were with your finger now, in five or 10 years, you're gonna be so much better, it's like off the scale, at being able to move that awareness. The Qigong is, is very similar in that regard. You're using breathing and body awareness, but this is a way that we can focalize it for healing and accelerating the healing process very quickly. And the kinds of results we see they're, they're phenomenal. They're, they're things that the medical establishment has not even known about. Has there been much uh, science at all conducted on quantum touch specifically? A, a little bit. We just haven't had a budget. You know, we're, we're just kind of like cruising along trying to keep our bills paid and we don't have much of a budget, but we have paid for science before. We recently had a clinical study published to a peer review group. And this was of people who had high levels of pain. And the pain, when I looked over the, who, who was in the study, we didn't discriminate. We just said, okay, if you got high levels of pain and there's somebody to give you a session, we'll just take that data. Most of the people had fibromyalgia, arthritis, or had been in a major accident. And a single session on average brought their pain down, the 41 people in the study, by 67%. However, the thing that I thought was even more interesting than that was that all 50 pain conditions that they reported, uh, all 50 responded to the session. Had it been some kind of psychological mechanism like a placebo, um, then you'd have had a third 
maybe a really good placebo, 40%, occasionally 50%. We had 100%, 50 out of 50. And that this isn't being researched really speaks to the, uh, the marketplace. We, I'll tell you a funny story. We had a, um, one of our practitioners was working in a hospital on post-surgical care patients. And she's just taking the pain away on these patients left and right. And the doctor comes up to her and says, you have to stop doing this on our patients. Hmm. And she said, why? You'll love this. He said, we, well, we can no longer predict how much pain medication to give them. Hmm. But the, you know, if you translate that into other language, we're not making any money on drugs, hmm. right. on drug sales. Oh, so you guys are drug dealers, essentially. Mm. So, yeah, I think, and this is one of the studies that I'd really like to see done at a, at a major university, if this ever reaches somebody in a position of influence. I would love to see this studied on how well it could prevent uh, medically induced opioid addiction, because a lot of people just come in for surgery and they then abuse it. I think it's about 10 or 15% of the people who've um, taken opioids will abuse it and then they become addicted and then they might be getting it on the street later. And there's you know, huge numbers of people who are, whose life are ruined with opioid addiction. Right, yeah. So I've, I've got a question. Through some of your own workshops, what are some examples that you've seen right then and there through quantum Oh my touch. God. Well, I'll tell you, it's one of the more extreme ones it just pops in my head. Um, one woman was being treated for neck pain. Mm. It caused her hearing to open up in an ear and she hadn't heard in that ear since she had been a teenager and she was in her late forties. Uh, in, in that same class, another woman was complaining that she put her glasses on the morning on in the morning and couldn't read the face of the clock mm. until she took the glasses off. We had, but there's, there's hundreds of them. My favorite, one of my favorite stories of all time was my friend, Deborah Gare. She was driving from, um, driving into London before the sun rose one morning and she didn't see the lorry that was across both lanes of the highway because it didn't have any lights on. And by the time she hit the brake, it was too late because her car was already smashing into the truck. And four or five other cars plowed into the back of her car. Some angelic man somehow got her out of the car before it exploded. It had caught flames. Uh, six, seven years later, she was barely able to walk. She was getting painful injections into her neck and back uh, that weren't helping her. She had lost her job as a scientist. She, her boyfriend had left her and her doctor says, soon you'll be living in a wheelchair. Yeah. So she, out of desperation, because she never would have done this otherwise, she went into a bookstore that was selling metaphysical books and they found out that they had my quantum touch video workshop, which we still sell by the way, many years later. Um, and they watched it for the very first time in the bookstore as a group. Now this isn't even a live teacher. This is just watching a video and they watched the video and the very first practice session that Deborah received took 90% of her pain away and she could turn her head. Mm. And she went back to the doctor and told the doctor what had happened. And he said, well, you'll be, you'll be back here soon enough begging for injections. And she said, no, I'm probably never going to see you again. And, and then she came back one more time with the flyer and said, would you like to learn about this? He goes, get out of here. So that was the end of that. Um, but she has become one of our top instructors and she has gone on to become much more than just a quantum touch practitioner and instructor, she has really evolved and developed herself in amazing ways. And, and this is an interesting phenomenon that I hadn't even thought about in a long time, but a lot of people who start doing quantum touch start developing other abilities. 
like the ability to see or perceive energy, to be able to look inside other people's bodies, to be able to know where to put their hands, and to develop higher levels of empathy. So uh, it's much more than anything I'm telling you, because this is it's really a spiritual practice that's presented in a totally ordinary way, but it taps people into their love, their compassion, and those spiritual feelings that we have, even if we don't label it that, it's still that. So is, would you consider this more of a, um, a medical model in the sense of someone's injured or ill or has physical problems and then that's usually when you're doing the healing or um, in what other ways than that uh, is it is it implemented into All somebody's right. life? Well, it, it, can, it can be a thousand things because whenever you learn how to move energy powerfully, you're doing much more than, than, than it appears to be. For example, I have a whole program called The Art of Youthing, how to slow, stop, and potentially uh, reverse the aging process. I haven't done that completely. I have slowed it. I'm 70 now. And I'm stronger than I've ever been in my life. I don't have any joint pain. I have no problems with mobility. I'm hitting the golf ball further than I ever have. And uh, I got carded two years ago before I won a golf tournament because they wanted to know if I was over 50 to enter the seniors. So um, you, can, you can use it for slowing the aging process. You can use it for a thousand things. It's kind of like an opening of a door. I, in, in my book, Secret Nature of Matter, it's like I said, oh my God, I made these discoveries, but it's like I have made it out as far as the mailbox. I don't know the territory. I don't know all the discoveries that are gonna be made. I'm a pioneer in the sense that I found you know, some simple hacks that allow us to do what looks like magic from the outside. But what did Arthur C. Clarke said? Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So mm, right. this looks like magic, except that I can teach anybody. If I, you know, I'll tell you another funny story. I went to the Magic Castle in LA. This is a place where magicians go to see other magicians. And you gotta be invited to get in. So I, everybody has to wear a suit when they go and it's all very formal. And I'm standing around between shows and I meet these two guys, a couple, magicians and I say, hey, you wanna see a magic trick that you've probably never seen before? And they go, oh yeah, we'd love to. So I had them measure each other's hips and the hips were off by a mile on each of them. And they could eat, and a nov the more a person is off, the easier a novice, you just put their hands on the person's hips and say that it's off. And I say, well, is there any way you can align yourself while you're standing there and your weight is balanced? You have no, no way of aligning the hips. So then I, I meditated like five seconds. I said, check them now. And the hips were totally level. And they got excited, said, do me, do me. So I did the other guy. And you know what they did? Completely unpredicted, unpredictable. Maybe this is, this is a old magician thing, but they each went into their wallet and gave me $5. And they said, this is the first time we've ever seen a real magic trick. Because from the outside, you know, they know there was no mechanism. They know there was no trickery. They know that I had nothing up my sleeve. I hadn't done anything physically. And that's what bothers the scientists so deeply. Because as much as science pretends to be empirical, they have some assumptions. And the assumption is everything in the reality can be explained through math, physics, and logic. And as soon as I do my little, my little alignment thing, I broke the rule because math, physics, and logic will not explain this. But then again, does math, physics, and logic explain the existence of love? Does it explain why you love this person or why coffee smells good or why these, thi why these things are in place? So getting way back to your question, a couple of minutes ago, yeah, quantum touch is set up in the sense of that we're treating something, we're dealing with an issue, but 
it will not work all the time. Quantum touch is not the answer to everything. And it will probably take pain away better than 90% of the time. But does it really solve the problem? And the answer is no, not all the time. Because there are emotional issues that are underneath the physical ones. And many times, quantum touch, the person had already done their homework and they were ready to see a miracle and quantum touch came along and that was all they needed was that extra pop. But I created an entirely different system that took me 30 years to figure it out entirely and it's called self-created health. And self-created health teaches people how to find, discover, and release the emotional causes of what's causing the condition. And it's done through simple interrogative questions that a doctor might ask, when did it begin? And what are the symptoms? And just a whole series of basic questions, real simple questions. And then I pump the person for answers. And in the course of their answers, you see a three-dimensional picture of an emotional situation that they didn't want to experience, that they don't want to feel, that's being expressed through the health condition. And then through a seven-step process, as they process through and get to the other side, not only will all the symptoms spontaneously disappear forever, but they feel intensely grateful that they had the condition. It's as if to say the body had the ability to be sick, not as a dysfunction, but a communication from their own higher consciousness on how they stop loving. The body has the ability to have dysfunction. And, and how many thousands of times have you heard the story, well, if it hadn't been for that tragedy, I would never have become the person that I am today. Right. That's not a coincidence. That's their higher self working with them, their future self working with them. Say, look, you're messed up. You have made a decision that you want to grow in this lifetime, that you want to evolve. And you cannot do so unless you make these big changes. And since you're completely unwilling to face these changes, we're going to put you flat on your back or do whatever to get you to stop what you're doing to make these profound changes in your life to become somebody else. So in going back to, to the book, your book, Secret Nature of Matter, you talk about a number of discoveries. Um, oh, yeah. What, what, are, what are maybe one or two of those discoveries? Well, what happened was I had written my third book called Quantum Touch 2.0, The New Human outlining a series of new human abilities that hadn't been documented. And the most obvious one was being able to send energy to the heart chakra to another person at any distance and work two or three times faster as, than if they were standing in front of me. And being able to align somebody without touching them. Or being able to align 100 people at once, as I did at the Smart Life Forum in Silicon Valley. Or and on and on and on. There's a whole series of new human abilities that were outlined in that book. And that was a prelude to the secret nature of matter. The secret nature of matter happened one day when I was in Santa Monica. I was at the Bulletproof Cafe. Shout out to Dave Asprey and his good work. And I was drinking a cup of their coffee with lots of butter and MCT oil. And I had played golf in the morning and I had the same sweater on and I look, felt in the pocket and there was a golf tee. And I tried something stupid because I like to do dumb things from time to time. And I thought, well, what would happen if I meditate on this golf tee and put the same energy and tension in to cause the alignment? See, seeing the cranial bones and the hips alignment is my go-to test because if I want to know if something is true or false, I can just ask the question, and if it doesn't move, that's a false. And if it does, it's true. And I can see it in two seconds and it's got perfect accuracy. So it's my simple to go-to test. Though most people don't care about it. It's a way that I can see something's happening. So I meditated on the golf tee and when then I handed it to somebody, it immediately caused the alignment. And I was shocked. I had to test it hundreds of times, of course. And then I said, well, would it work with plastic or rubber or paper or pebbles or water? or a leaf. 
I tried it on everything I could think of, and it worked on all physical matter. Then I tried experiments to, how can I get the information out of it? So I take a penny and I, I put it in the oven. Didn't change the information. Or if I boiled it in water, nothing. The information was still there. Smash it to smithereens, the hammer. Not, nothing. It's still inside there. I tried homeopathic experiments. I tried all kinds of things. Very difficult to get the information out of an object once it's inside there. And then I found out that if I were to boil the water, when the water cooled down, it still held the information. But the water that had evaporated on the lid of the pot, that had lost the information. Mm, interesting. So water turning to ice lost the information, but ice turning to water still held the information. So I didn't make up the rules. I'm just reporting what I found. And we've had, you know, many, many of our practitioners and instructors pick up the book, Secret Nature of Matter, test out the experiments. Can I put energy into an object and will it work? Um, and they were able to replicate, I think I did something like 58 experiments in the book. And in the course of the experiments, I started seen things that caused me to question why certain things were going on. Why was the, the energy spreading from one object to another object? And I couldn't understand why that was happening. I, in, I could go through that in detail, how I got there, but eventually I discovered what I have termed conscious entanglement. And I talked to a quantum physicist about it. He said, well, it isn't exactly entanglement as we know, but it's a good description for what you discovered. His name is Tom Campbell, and he has a wonderful site, and he's doing some wonderful work. He's a quantum physicist who um, is really into consciousness and matter as well. He wrote something nice for the book as, uh, as well as that. But anyway, what I found out was that if you join objects together in your mind, Anything you then later do to one of the objects will happen to all of them simultaneously. So I did an experiment where I met these two women at a conference. And in order to have objects that I'd never seen, I borrowed some change. So here's some change in my hand and I'm looking at it. And I say, okay, I see pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters. I see all the coins in my hand. They're all here. I see them all. That was my meditation. Just out loud in my head, yep, I see all the coins, they're all here, I see them all. Then I, hand, I put the coins on a table and handed each of the women one of the quarters and then I picked up a penny and I reached into my pocket and pulled out a coin I had previously meditated on and I tapped the coin and both women were immediately aligned. And wow. then I had to do the experiment in reverse the next day to see. So I had to think about it. Well, how can I do a reverse experiment? And I had a woman put her change on a table and pick up one of the coins. Now, she had never looked at this change. She didn't care about this. It wasn't personal to her. These weren't like rare coins or something special, an heirloom in her collection. These are just strangers that she used to buy things. And... I tapped one of the coins on the table and nothing happened to her. I got really excited because I succeeded at making the experiment fail. So this is clearly something that the scientific community is not ready for yet because I, I don't have any progress at being able to show people at universities these phenomenon. I'd love to come in and, and say, hey, want to see something interesting? Want to see something mysterious that we could explore? No. So well, it, and yeah, and I like how you um, talked about kind of the, the linear scientific model and, you know, through, I know Bruce Lipton very well, for example, um, who I'm going to be interviewing for my film very soon and, uh, uh, you know, quantum uh, physicist who also focuses mostly on consciousness and, you yeah. know, he explains, I think, I think that kind of pioneering edge of science definitely helps explain 
uh, the work that you're doing, right? That everything is interconnected, that all matter is uh, visible and invisible, uh, is interconnected not only through human beings, but everything on the planet and everything in the universe, right? Yeah, Bruce Lipton has extrapolated from the, epiphano- the epigenetics and realizing that consciousness is affecting your own epigenetics. But from that material point of view, even without a full explanation as how does your consciousness affect your epigenetics, which is still a stretch, which is fine, he's not yet understanding that your consciousness could affect somebody else's epigenetics. You see, that's the bridge. The, br- the bridge is you take somebody like Wim Hof, who has set 20 odd world records and right. sat in an ass ice bath and climbed Mount Everest in his shorts and done all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, he has shown that you can affect your own autoimmunity. You can affect your own autonomic nervous system with your own states of consciousness. What I'm showing is that you can affect other people's biological function with your state of consciousness. That's why this is such a stretch, even for uh, Bruce Lipton, Deepak Chopra. Uh, I, I told Deepak Chopra, um, I gave him my book and he wasn't quite ready for it. He almost fell over backwards when I, I gave, told, he was gonna give a talk on panpsychism at the Science of Consciousness conference. Panpsychism is the idea that all matter may be self-aware on some level. And I said to him, I've done some experiments that give empirical, that sh- you know, empirical demonstrations on the existence of panpsychism. And his eyes got wide, he practically fell over backwards when I said that to him. But as yet, I haven't heard from him. Uh, I gave Bruce Lipton a book also and haven't heard back, but yeah. this is that cutting edge. Because yeah. once these experiments are replicated by other people, then they'll get more traction. But right now, it's, a, hey, I'm just a guy who figured stuff out, okay? I'm, I had five and a half years of college majoring in draft evasion. I didn't want to go to Vietnam. <laughs> um, I, I'm just some guy who is curious and kept on exploring something that other people weren't looking at. I've heard a definition of genius. It's paying attention to detail. And it's not that I'm, I'm smart. I never did particularly well in, you know, on tests, but I have paid a lot of attention to things that other people weren't looking at. And as a result, I've made some discoveries that most of the world isn't quite ready for yet. But those who are on the cutting edge, who want to go further, that's why I was, I, and when I was in LA, I was wanting to make a documentary called The Galileo Project. What would happen if you had visible, teachable, paradigm-changing information before the world was ready to see it. And that would be the idea of, and I still like to do it at some point. And it would Let, be, let's, uh, let's talk about it. I'm, I'm uh, finishing up a film now and, and maybe sounds great. working on a new film. So uh, oh. yeah, let's talk more about it. <laughs> L- love to. It's gonna be really funny too, because I just share this, for, is that if somebody's willing to stick around and see it, they will see it and learn it. And it progresses the plot. And if somebody acts arrogant and walks away, it adds to the humor of the piece. So as long as you got a producer who can bring people in rooms together, the thing's going to fly. Hmm. Yeah, sounds fascinating. And certainly, certainly, uh, I don't think there's no better time than now for that sort of thing. So oh, absolutely. Um, I have a question for you. As we, um, as somebody may be interested in going deeper into this work, you know, what does that look like? What is the, you know, someone comes to a, a workshop, a retreat, uh, they want to, yeah, yeah sure. what are the different levels of that? What does that look like for somebody? We have certified instructors all around the world teaching quantum touch workshops. We have practitioners in over 50 countries doing it. My books are in 17 languages right now. Uh, if somebody wants to learn quantum touch, the best way is to go to the website at quantumtouch.com and then click on uh, workshops or instruct, you know, and then see where they are in the world and find something around you. Another step that you can do is we have a online video workshop that's broken up into four and six and eight minute segments and you can watch it as many times as you like. And it's me teaching when I was still teaching. 
and going through an entire workshop with all the questions that people most commonly ask and it's just right there and a lot of people start there and they're able to do the work immediately that's what those people were watching in england when they gave deborah the session another approach that people can take is to get my book quantum touch the power to heal and start practicing the exercises in the book because i don't hold anything back i don't keep any secrets i i want to make everything straightforward and accessible now and when people realize how valuable this is that this is a real skill that's going to change your life then it's it's totally available for you that's awesome so um as we kind of uh, finish up here, I do want to encourage everyone who's interested in going deeper, definitely go to the website, quantumtouch.com. Get the book, obviously a really great way to start, but check out the video courses or look for an instructor near you. Um, I, I think this work is so important and, uh, and incredible in the world. And I have kind of a final question, well, a couple of final questions for you. One, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but I want to ask you, okay. uh, can you do, you, can you do this uh, work remotely? So you're sitting there. Can you do this work on me sitting here via this zoom recording? No problem. Yeah. It's as if you were right here, there is no distance. If you're a million, if you're a thousand miles from somebody, can you love, do you love them less? Those people who want to believe, you know, that, Love is an electromagnetic frequency. Well, if that were true, it would fall off inversely proportional to the square of the distance of the source. So you'd love somebody half as much at seven feet as you love them at five feet, right? That's silly. Love does not fall off with distance. And I'll show you guys something right now. Maybe we'll, I'll send it to all the people who would future listen to this as well. This, I think you'll find this very interesting. Put all your awareness in your heart chakra and see and breathe into the heart area and see if you can feel how you feel love, compassion, gratitude, cherishing, adoring, those kinds of vibrations in your heart chakra. And I'm gonna bring in all the future listeners as well. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little energy to your heart chakra. like that. So how's that doing for you? Feel good, yeah. Yeah, did you feel the expansion? I did, I yeah. did feel the expansion. Yeah, yeah. You see what I did was I had you tune your radio, so to speak, to the frequency I was gonna broadcast. And so then you're tuned into that vibration that I'm sending. And that's why it was very easy to feel. Yeah. So that, um, do you go into detail in kind of that discovery in your book at all? Is that what I, you... I tell everything? Yeah. I don't hold anything back. Quantum touch, the power to heal is how I learned it, how you do it, all the exercises, um, advanced techniques, the whole thing, it's all, it's all right there. Then um, the level two book, uh, Quantum Touch 2.0, The New Human, outlines how we can now work faster without even touching people by, by opening up the heart chakra energies. That's just mind-blowing discovery. And that led, of course, to the secret nature of matter that you could actually put that energy information into physical objects. Oh, I didn't tell you. This is a quantum touch pendant, and it's been joined together. I've joined all these together, so now we have over 5,000 of them in the hands of healers who are putting their own energy into it. And we've seen crazy things happening from these pendants from time to time. One man I met hadn't breathed through his right sinus since he was a teenager. 
He hold, held up a, sin, uh, a pendant on each of his sinuses, and five minutes later, he's breathing through the right sinus. <laughs> uh, one guy had sprained his thumb doing jujitsu, and uh, he held his pendant against his thumb for 20 minutes before bed, and the next morning, he had full use of the thumb. He thought it was going to be a month before his thumb was good again. We don't even know what this is yet. As I said, we just cracked the door open. And there's new discoveries to be made all the time. But we're just learning. So people can also get the, the pendants on our website. They're also available for those who are interested in adding their energy mm. to the collective. Because this is now holding the energy of thousands of different people who are putting their best in. So we don't even know what this is yet. Yeah, this is huge. And, and, you know, I want to acknowledge you for this incredible work that you've been doing and, and sharing and expanding for so long. I also want to, you know, there's somebody else I'd love to uh, connect you with at some point. I, I was, we were talking offline. I just finished a six day retreat at the Chi Center with Master Ming Tong Gu through a system of yeah. healing called Wisdom Healing Qigong. And, um, and they do, what's fascinating is this is a 7,000-year-old system, and, and he explains all of this very clearly. They've kind of identified why all this stuff happens. It's, it's fascinating, and yet you've developed this ability to create changes in, in seconds and minutes. And yeah. you know, to me, that's, that's fascinating. So I think you guys would, would you know, be a great synergy for you guys to connect as well. Um, Love it. And as we finish up here with a final question, um, what advice would you give people tuning in one piece of maybe the most important advice you would suggest people do to activate their greatness within to, to really help them maximize their human potential. I would say that everybody who has ever wounded you gave you the message that your love wasn't valuable, that your love didn't matter and it didn't have any impact. And I would say the truth is the exact opposite, that if you can just spend a few minutes a day realizing how your love does have impact, and it's incredibly valuable, and, and just doing one nice thing for yourself, making one tiny decision that's better than what you normally do, whether it's eating this instead of that, whether it's doing this exercise instead of this other thing, if you can just make one tiny change every week, what I call a 2% change in your life, every week, just make one that you're gonna to stick to. It's very easy. It's like, okay, instead of this, I'm just gonna make this one little thing and I'll just keep doing it. By the end of a year, you're 100% different. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to go and take tiny steps. It's very hard to say, okay, now from now on, I'm going to be 100% different. No, just make a tiny step and realize that that love that you're bringing forward truly matters. It makes a difference. It has impact on yourself and everybody you meet. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Richard. It's been an honor connecting with you again. Thank you and, so much. And you know, really seeing this incredible work through Quantum Touch, encouraging everybody uh, go over to quantumtouch.com right now and uh, and uh, find out how uh, you can go deeper into this work. So, so thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. Hey, thank you, brother. Yeah. Well, that's it for today's episode. Our hope and desire is that you get as much out of these interviews and episodes as we do. Each week, you can count on us being here to help you activate the greatness that's already within you. And we can all do that by continuing to develop and grow our minds, bodies, emotions, and connection to a higher purpose. Please make sure to share this with your friends on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag Crane Factor and use the hashtag activating greatness so we can continue growing this community together and changing the world for the better. And a huge shout out to our sponsors for making this show possible. Head over to performancetea.com to try their recovery, balance, focused, and energy teas. These teas are made from incredible healing herbal plants that help your body heal, gives you natural energy, helps prevent disease, and help you feel better in every way. Again, that's performance tea, that's T-E-A, performancetea.com, and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. That code works on their website, and it also works on Amazon. 
Again, activate 15, and you'll get a 15% discount off of these amazing tees. We appreciate you tuning in and for supporting our sponsors who make this show possible. Remember, you already have greatness within you. You just need to activate it. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you on the next episode. Thank you.